We are less than a month away from taking over our first presidency. It, pre it represents obviously a great opportunity, a major commitment, but also an honor and responsibility. Uh, the European integration for, was for, for a long time a main driving force behind our hard work, reforms and, and changes from the post-communist country to the Slovakia of today. And, and indeed the back to Europe was one of the Velvet Revolution's principal, principal credos. And it was uh, an expression of wish for freedom, civil liberties, but also that was the voice of our European identity, which we never lost. We just, we just didn't have, have it for quite some time, not by our own, own decisions. Uh, today we call the EU our home, the euro our currency, and Schengen our area. And the presidency is the culmination of our integration journey. We are in the core of Europe, we are in the heart of Europe. Uh, and we are grateful for it because we were given a lot and we feel that it's time uh, to give back. And as for preparations, uh, just like technical remarks, um, we are in the final stages, but still uh, the, the program will only be adopted after the British referendum um, in the very end, the 30th of, of June, for obvious reasons. And uh, so the Slovak government will formally endorse it on the 30th of June. Uh, allow me to start my presentation with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with, with something rather unusual. Uh, I would like to present you uh, a, a short film about, about our upcoming presidency. For us, this sound holds immense emotional value. This sound symbolizes life, love and Slovakia. Slovakia has traditionally seen itself as the heart of Europe. For the next six months, its pulse will become the pulse of the entire European Union. We have many ideas and even more ambitions. And yet, we're not only concerned with how our presidency will help Slovakia. We're asking, plain and simple, what will our presidency bring to the European Union? This is our answer. We will work hard, systematically and persistently on issues that are important to all EU member states and their citizens. We have a clear plan for tackling priority issues. We are determined to help Europe avoid fragmentation and enhance resilience. We will pay particular attention to making the migration and asylum policies sustainable. We want Europe to be prepared for investments and new jobs. This is why we will focus on creating the right environment that allows European projects to get off the ground. How? By mobilizing investment tools, by deepening the economic and monetary union, by helping small and medium-sized enterprises within the capital markets union, and by strengthening the banking union. Since we understand what connected Europe means, we will devote our efforts to common European projects, such as the single market, the energy union, and the digital single market. We will therefore focus on challenges that require a common approach and common European solutions. Such challenges include the previously mentioned sustainable migration policy, as well as the European neighborhood policy and EU enlargement. These are the issues where, acting as an honest broker, we will seek solutions benefiting the entire Union. As Presidency, we will be chairing one of the three main EU institutions, the Council of the European Union, which represents the EU's 28 member states. The meetings at different levels from technical to ministerial, will take place in Brussels, Luxembourg and Bratislava. And in doing so, we will show you Slovakia. Her beauties, charms and secrets. Slovakia, the country holding the presidency of the Council of the European Union from the 1st of July to the 31st of December. Slovakia, recharging Europe.
Well, as you could see also in the movie, uh, the, the main kind of like uh, feature of, of our presidency is logo, as, as in every every case, just to explain to the it's um, it's the it's it, it's this emoticon is formed uh, from the Slovak uh, uh, punctuation uh, characters typical for for the Slovak language. The author is a 20 years 23 years old student of a, of a University of uh, Fine Arts and. Uh, Basically, the idea is that you can change the mood of the of the logo according to the situation. So, for instance, after the attacks in Brussels, uh, the the said logo, the said emoticon was uh, on the statement of the ministry concerning the terrorist attacks in Brussels, for instance. So, we are hoping we will be mostly smiling. <laughs> Well, um, I will try to outline in my presentation basically four areas, the context, the point of departure for the Slovak presidency, our ambition, how to contribute to do uh, our Europe, mm -hmm. our House of Europe uh, better and, and, and more prepared for the, for the next century, if I may say so. Uh, <coughs> then I will outline the priorities per se of the presidency program and the vision of Europe that we aim for. Uh, as uh, as uh, as you probably know, uh, we, we are in a so-called uh, trio. We will take over the steering wheel of the Council of the EU, what is the whole official uh, term of, the, of, of, of this office, after, after Netherlands, uh, as of 1st of July. The trio is formed by Netherlands, Slovakia in, and Malta. Uh, so we are, we are basically a trio of one experienced country and uh, two complete novices, because be it, be it Malta or Slovakia, it's the very first presidency for us, and it's the 12th presidency for Netherlands, which, which shows the difference uh, for fans of numerology or people who like numbers. It's the 12th presidency of Netherlands, as I said, and it's the presidency of Slovakia 12 years afterwards. Unfortunately, I don't have any explanation what it means in terms of numerology, but we hope it's a good omen. <laughs> well, uh, to the more, uh, to the less, uh, less um, entertaining and and. Um, Maybe, maybe um, the more sobering uh, facts. The, the the setup and the Slovakia is assuming its presidency in very challenging times. Uh, in the past couple of years, the union has faced a number of serious crises, and they have undoubtedly impacted its overall shape, but also formed moods of EU population, uh, migration, and refugee crisis. Uh, clearly reopened philosophical questions like multiculturalism, tolerance, solidarity, safety. It even touched upon our humanism and capacity to help the rest of the, of the world. The, the terrorism, the spillover of, of Daesh brutality in European capitals spread fears never seen here before. Uh, we are still facing in the 21st century a conflict and practically a state of uh, civil war in, in, in Ukraine with, with, with part of uh, its territory being occupied. We are facing the uh, already mentioned UK referendum, which can change basically the whole uh, ball game. And uh, we are also uh, witnessing a, a fragile uh, Eurozone. Uh, this is a difficult context uh, for the member states uh, and the EU citizens. The results are are uh, not so good. As a result, we observe a certain sense of uh, political fragmentation, and this is our primary and greatest concern, because fragmentation uh, makes us vulnerable internally as well as, um, as, well as uh, externally. And uh, it really questioned the credibility of core integration projects such as, for instance, Schengen, the EMU, or enlargement which is pity because basically EU is, is questioning its strongest, uh, its strongest and, and, and uh, very easy to present uh, achievement. Uh, more on the level of the national states, we, we are observing rising Euroscepticism, radicalization and, and move towards uh, anti-politics meanings, uh, basically the, 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 the <coughs> Those who are who are who are basically using Euroscepticism and radicalization are, are claiming that they don't want to uh, be part of the political establishment, and their their means are basically out of this establishment, and uh, these forces are hard to control in the in the functioning and existing democratic system which we which we have. But 
we don't mm -hmm. like such defeatist mentality, any community would have huge problems if confronted with these types of challenges and the magnitude of them. Uh, we think that uh, those who only criticize without trying to find a real and workable solutions do it mostly with the intention to mobilize and manipulate the public against the EU. And uh, if I can help myself with the, with the famous quotation of uh, Sir Winston Churchill, the EU is the worst form of European coexistence except for all the others that have been tried. I basically uh, came from the conference of, uh, of ambassadors which we had in Slovakia uh, last week and one of our uh, keynote speakers was the Dutch Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Kunders, and he used even more uh, expressive description of Europe. He said that it's not the mythological beauty, uh, it's rather somebody with some a lot of warts in his uh, in his face and even uh, hair uh, in his nose on her, or her nose and, and ears and it, it, it even smells sometimes but it's really something which is worth to fight for and uh, worth to try for. We do think that the presidency is an excellent opportunity uh, to substantially contribute to the joint search. We would want to be an honest broker with positive attitude. Uh, if I may use the, the, the famous famous term by not, not less famous uh, Irish entrepreneur, we would like to have a non-nonsense presidency, uh, pragmatic, uniting and being a people's voice. So as I said, that we don't have this logo, but rather this one. <laughs> So how can we contribute? Um, we have an idea of how to move Europe forward. The basic two elements are we would like to focus on positive agenda because uh, that's one of the one of the things we don't we don't like in certain uh, uh, that we that we are unable, unwilling, or whatever to present EU as such as a, as a, as a, as, a, as a very successful project and we are forgetting all the benefits which the EU is bringing for all the member states in different areas. Uh, we, would we would want to build upon the successful experience and continue to foster, for instance, single market and uh, in order to remove barriers and obstacles in the single market. In our case, for instance, there will be a special, uh, special focus on the digital single market. I will outline it later on. And aim for sustainable solutions. We don't want to lose sight of a strategic vision and long-term perspective. We are aware of the fact that our presidency is only for half a year and uh, all, the, all the steps and all the ambitions we have we see as a, as a part of a process which the EU still is and uh, that's how we would want to approach it. The overar overarching ambition will be to help Europe to be more resilient in terms of a stable economy, a decent single market, effectively manage migration and asylum policy as well as strong external relations and inter international trade. The ingredients uh, that we have to merge are threefold. It's the vision and the ambition which we have, the current reality on the ground and the strategic EU documents. That's a framework with which, which kind of like gives us uh, the, the maneuvering uh, space. What priorities do we want? We want to be pragmatic. We need to deliver tangible results. So we will concentrate on common European projects with direct benefits for daily lives of citizens. We want to be uniting. We want to overcome fragmentation in Europe. Therefore, we will try to find solutions acceptable for all member states and beneficial for the Union as a whole. And we want to be people's voice. We will focus on the needs of citizens in order to restore their trust in the EU. I we think that uh, these principles are mutually reinforcing and we believe that with tangible results, we can help overcome the fragmentation and we can bring real added value for our citizens. The priority areas, economic and financial agenda, single market, especially digital but also European Union, and sustainable migra migration and asylum policy, and I would like to stress the word sustainable, and external relations uh, and trade. Uh, let me start with the European economy. Uh, we will support the environmental favorable, uh, we, will, we will support um, an environment favorable for, to investment, further economic growth and job creation. We will thus focus on the triangle, the European Fund uh, for Strategic Investment, 
the Capital Markets Union and the EU budget. We will work on the deepening of the Economic and Monetary Union. The Eurozone has developed some mechanisms since the Euro crisis and without any doubt it is now much better equipped to manage the future crisis. However, significant gaps are still existing in the EMU architecture and uh, the sooner we close them, the better for, for all. Only then we will finally secure stability, prosperity and full credibility of the Eurozone. The, market, the Capital Markets Union is our other focus specifically. A true single market for capital would unlock new sources of cross-border funding. It would make life easier for business heavily dependent on the banking sector. And we are ready to continue the efforts of the Dutch presidency on this agenda and then move on with uh, key legislati legislative um, initiatives. Let me turn to the second basket to boost the potential of the single market, surely. The single market uh, uh, has been and is a success story, yet we believe that it needs to be enriched by two new pillars, the digital single market and the energy union. The digitalization and e-commerce, and I guess I'm in an environment and in a country where I don't need to try to, um, to um, uh, get your support for, for, for this specific area. We all know that uh, in, in 2014, the share of e-commerce in the total retail sector in Europe was slightly over 7%, whereas in, in the USA, it was almost 12, 12%. Many companies would want to start and increase their online sales, but that can only happen in an, in an, in an, in an, with clear e-commerce rules, uh, which would be applied in the whole EU universally. Uh, let me also welcome the adoption of a digital single market package uh, from the from the um, end of end of this May. We will diligently work on its effective implementation. We consider it to be an excellent opportunity to overcome fragmentation in digital space and uh, remove barriers uh, like data portability, geo-blocking and international roaming, which are all things which we, we think that are easily to sell in good, good, in, in good sense uh, to the citizens because those are things and restrictions which, uh, which, the, which the citizens are, um, are confronted in everyday life. Our other ambition is uh, to significantly contribute to building a reliable and competitive energy union, strengthen international energy security, improved regional cooperation and reinforced solidarity are the essential tools to reduce energy dependence of Europe. Centerpiece of the energy unions, union is diversification of resources, suppliers and transit routes. <coughs> We also want to pursue an ambitious climate and efficient recycling policy. These are two inseparable parts of the energy union. As of, as of number three, it is obvious to all of us that migration will remain an urgent issue dur during our presidency. Uh, seemingly nothing new. Migration is not something which, uh, which uh, came to Europe a year or two ago. It represents a long-term historic phenomenon. But Europe has been dealing with unprecedented migration flows only since last year or so. So they put immense pressure on EU's external borders as well as the asylum system of member states. And we all know how utterly sensitive it remains to us uh, and to the, the, the migrants uh, too. We believe that we can resolve it only through joint EU-wide efforts. And we will, as the presidency, we will promote comprehensive solutions linking up all relevant internal and external aspects. We must return to a proper functioning of the Schengen area. And in this respect, it is essential to make the European border and Coast Guards operational. Last but not least, we must continue to pay attention to our external environment. I speak of uh, trade agreements and enlargement policy. Free trade uh, is a significant contributor to internal and external stability of the EU. Slovakia is an open economy, similarly to, to, to Ireland, uh, supportive of soundly negotiated free trade agreements. TTIP is a major opportunity for Slovakia as well and for other countries in Europe. It would have positive impact practically in every area, be it growth, employment or overall well-being. So we stand, stand ready to support the EU Commission to reach an ambitious, comprehensive and balanced agreement.
However, the final text must safeguard a high level of EU standards. We should take seriously the critical voices and have an open discussion about the consequences. Yet it, uh, and, uh, but it must avoid unfounded and unproven allegations, anti-globalizations or anti-American moods which are, which are accompanying uh, the discussions. Those are the uh, four basic uh, areas. The benchmark of a successful presidency will be tangible progress in legislative files, efficiency interplay with other EU institutions, be it the Commission or the European Parliament. I think that uh, the colleagues from, uh, from Tishak's office uh, could tell interesting stories about, about this, this point, I guess. Capacity to react to unforeseen events and circumstances, meaning that we are not a permanent uh, crisis management but, uh, but a body, uh, an organization equipped with ability to deal with something which comes and it doesn't come unexpectedly like, like well, it's not, not that understandable here in Ireland, but uh, the Slovak, uh, the Slovak uh, road workers have always, are always surprised in winter that we get snow, so we should, <laughs> have, we should avoid that. The most challenging part of our presidency will be our ability to assume the true role of presidency, to put aside national priorities and clearly pursue a common European interest. To do so, we need to fight our complacent mentality, to restore trust among member states and recreate the ability to listen and to, del to deliver on what has been agreed.